All right, guys, welcome back to the Frugal Homestead. So today we're going to take a look at the Echo Worthy 130 watt flexible solar panel. So a little backstory on this. I did get sent this to review. I can say whatever I want. That said, I actually was looking at this exact panel. Let me give you a little jump back in time and explain. My buddy Mike has one of these flexible solar panels. Now I've seen them before, but the technology back then, I mean, you could just tell they were gonna dry out in the sun and crack and just be bad. He has one of the longer ones. I'm not sure if it's 100 or 120 water, but I thought that is awesome. The only thing I didn't like about it is that it's a little longer than this one. A little skinnier, but a little longer. And I thought that won't fit behind the back seat of my fit. It's too long wide. This one actually fits perfectly. So I feel that I don't have to put stuff on top of it. I can actually just stand it all the way up against the back of my back seat and then put my battery powered cooler against it. It keeps it covered. It won't be in the sun, but it's light, it's efficient, and it works really well for my needs. So when I saw Mike have one, I knew I had to have one. And I just worked out with perfect luck that Echo Worthy approached this channel and said, hey, you can say whatever you want. We're gonna send you a panel. Let us know what you think. So the first thing I wanna say about this panel is the weight is a lot lower than I had anticipated. All right, it comes in just about 4.5 pounds. So I actually thought this was gonna be a lot heavier than what it is. Now, when you deal with flexible solar panels, you need to understand there is a difference, all right? you are going to have a hard time optimizing because unless you have something to reinforce the back, they naturally concave, which can be good or bad depending on what you're doing to collect your solar power. Now, I also will say that most of these flexible solar panels will have the smaller version of connectors as well as smaller wire and they generally will not be very flexible and they generally will not be very long. That's just the way all of these kind of work out. Now, when you're talking about a flexible solar panel, there's kind of a niche of people that really use these. Some people use them for emergency power. Some people like put them in their closet and then if there's ever a power outage, they can take these outside their day, charge things up and boom, good to go. For me and my use case is I use it all over the farm and when we're going camping or traveling. So I do have an OPS power station. And when we go camping, I use that at primitive sites to power my electric cooler. Now the electric cooler doesn't use a whole lot of power, but if you're going to be there for days on end, even that unit will not power everything that I need to do because I may want to run lights at night. I may want to run a TV at night. I may want to run my cooler day and night. I may want to charge phones, camera gear for YouTube. You would not believe how much power we go through charging up cameras, charging up mics, charging up our phones. So to have one of these to take with us means I pretty much have unlimited power as long as the sun's out. Now I did hook this up on a camping trip to Burr Oak State Park. And we had a primitive site and it actually was easily without trying to optimize it just throwing it out on the ground keep up with my cooler and even in even out most of the time anytime clouds would move in the cooler might kick on and run at a higher wattage but most times it was kind of keeping up and doing a good job now anytime the cooler shuts off because it comes down to temperature and shuts off the panel is then charging with no draw. So it actually turned out to be the perfect system. I knew in my mind, this is what I wanted to put with my oops power station. That way that the two would work together in tandem perfectly. Now, another thing I've done with this panel is I put it in place of the 180 watt panel we have outside. All right. That just runs here to the tiny house, it's our little backup system. We now have four batteries and 
I'll be honest, there was times of the day, and I think it's more because the other panel is not optimized angle, the 180 watt isn't, that this thing was bringing in more wattage per the app that connects to the battery. It was bringing in more, more power overall, voltage slash wattage, than my 180 watt panel was. Now I think that might have just been because when I set up that panel, we optimized it for winter because it was winter. So the angle it's set at catches best for winter. And this one was kind of laying down a little flatter underneath of it, just propped up. And that's the whole thing with this. I've never tried to optimize this to see how much I can get. But at one point in time, I was getting 105 watts out of this panel coming into my batteries at 12 volt. So that's pretty good. I'm just gonna be honest. That is pretty good for any solar panel to be hitting up there by its top mark. This is a 130 watt panel. Now, another thing I do with these is I will hook these up to a cheap charge controller I actually have rigged to my truck. My truck still has a battery from like eight years ago in it, all right? And it wasn't a good battery when we started. It was a very cheap battery. But what I've learned is if I just top it off every once in a while, whether it's putting a trickle charger on it, throwing a solar panel on it, but just if I haven't run in a few days or just every couple weeks, I will top it off. So all I have to do is go hook a solar panel to it now because I have a cheap charge controller. It'll fill it up and then shut off. I also put a trickle charger on at times, but this thing, just to be able to go out there and throw it on the ground underneath, click these on up where it connects in behind the bumper and boom, it'll top my battery off. What that does is it increases the capacity to keep it up by the top. I'm sure my alternator's probably starting to go a little bit, but this was a simple way to set it up to where even if I'm out in the woods, like cutting firewood, if I can get a clear spot to get some sun to this panel, it's going to be pumping power into that battery. So it really makes it so I can run around with it and do different things. Now, some other things we've done with it is literally just take it out in the woods and use it to power the power station. And then I will use my plug-in batteries for my Porter and Cable drill set and be able to keep charging batteries while I'm out in the woods in order to work on our deer stands, all right? All of them are falling into disrepair. I had to go out there and screw some metal in and do some other things because of the recent storm and it was a great help. Now. Here's the thing that I want to say. You need to see what size flexible panel you really want. All right? Because some of these are longer, like my buddy Mike's, and a little thinner. All right? The width is smaller. The length is longer. So I think this is perfect for me because I can stick this in my little Honda Fit and put it just behind the seat you may want something longer. They also are making these now where they are in other shapes. So you may get a full on square one. Echo Worthy is pretty much sticking to this one design right now as far as I know. I will say that there is one con and I don't really take it as a con to this panel. And that is simply that here where the leads connect in, there is a lot of high quality sealer where the block goes down. All right, really, that's not an issue. All right, it's literally just aesthetics. They used a lot and they didn't try and clean it up, but I'm sure it's probably put out by a machine and stuck down in there. So really the aesthetics of it, it does not do anything to how the panel works. It literally does nothing. It's just a looks thing. Now, if you want to get into the details of this, we will go ahead and break that down now. All right, too many people just go off the specs. So I'm going to do the specs right here on camera so nobody can argue. So we are exactly 27 and a quarter inches wide. We are exactly 37 and three quarters inch length overall. Now, for our leads, we are 35 and a half inches long on the leads. Now, 
We're going to go ahead and flip it over here. All right, there's your backside view. Now, when you're doing this, you'll have this tag, and I'll put it up on the screen for you guys. But just so you know, it's 130 watts, mono, crystalline, of course, 21 volts of max power. Open circuit is 24.5. Max power current, 6.16 amp. Short circuit current, 6.5 amp. Weight, 4.4 pounds. Size, as I mentioned already. Now, this model is the ECOM-130, 130 watt, obviously. Now, when we're looking at this panel, I think that the price point is very reasonable for what it is. But the next thing I would say is Echo Worthy is well known for their Black Friday sales. They are also around most holidays doing good business. And I definitely would take a moment and consider this panel. I really think that it has everything you will need if you're looking for something that's movable usable but can take a little bit more of a beating i have not been nice to this thing it's been out in the woods i've done all kinds of things with it as you see when i move it around i just slap it around i'm not nice to stuff and this thing still looks as good as the day i bought it i really have zero complaints i do want to figure out how my buddy mike took the eyelets and he put big heavy duty magnets in them so he could stick it on top of his vehicle, even in high wind environments. So I'm gonna have to get with him on that and figure it out. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of this thing. Do you think that it would fit into your needs somewhere around your property? I mean, this thing would be nice just to have in a closet with a power station, even if you lived in like an apartment. I'll just be honest with you because you could just take it outside, charge up and then come back in. It wouldn't be a so much a need. And let's be honest, lately, I've had two or three days just in the last month where the power's been out. I've had multiple where the internet's been out, which has caused the guys to have to take the lines down and the power's out for short periods of time. This has come in handy in so many different ways. So I think it's pretty clear by the video. I am super excited to be able to have this panel it sat in my Amazon cart for a long time and just by a stroke of luck, they reached out and I'm very glad they did. I am extremely impressed with how it works. Do I think it's the absolute best on the market? No. Echo Worthy brings you, there's probably the name is what it is. They bring you a cost efficient product that's yet durable. All right. They're not trying to be the best on the market. They're trying to make it so you can afford this stuff. And I tend to find that most of the stuff that's made that way nowadays with actual names that you know generally have a decent product. Now, I will do more testing and give you a longer term review once we get a full year or two's use out of it. I have seen no yellowing and this thing has spent a lot of time outside and that was the number one thing I was worried about. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments if this is something that interests you or if you have this and have had it for longer than I have, please let me know. I would love to hear your feedback. But with that said, if you haven't already, and I don't know why you wouldn't have, go down, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can see all of our upcoming videos. Make sure you leave us a comment, leave us a like, and we will see you in the next one.